there, we are Claire and Nick Butcher and we've been together for over 20 years. We used to live in Wiltshire in the UK, with Nick having a background in bathroom sales and myself in hospitality and catering. In 2020, we decided to leave the daily grind to start a new life in France. Eventually, we ended up buying this. It's not officially a chateau, even though the village locals call it one. However, it is just as large and equally as much hard work as a chateau. With a horde of original features and the building having been unoccupied for many years, we are slowly breathing life back into her, whilst frequently still finding the many treasures she holds. Join us on our journey with our dogs, Flora and Merlo, as we renovate our Maison de Maitre, one turret short of a chateau. Well, another Sunday morning and we seem to be back at the market. So, uh, yay, shopping. <laughs> Well, we're both weighed down with podgies. Yay! Well, after the market, Claire and I went for a lovely lunch at a restaurant in Sainte La Terrasse. Now we're back home, taking the two little dogs out. Well, we come up the lane and here's a field of sunflowers. But they're not looking too cheerful, are they? Our first stop this morning will be a discount stone yard in Matter. Um, we tried going here a couple of weeks ago, but they were on holiday and they shut for a good couple of weeks. So fingers crossed today they're open and we are off to look at a bench. We've come all the way here 
and it's not open until tomorrow so we'll just have to have another trip back tomorrow we've now briefly come home and we've swapped vehicles we are now in the van we're now off to go and try and find some trellising panels to finish off a couple of areas around the pool always fun it's not been a very successful day so far so this morning we went to go to a shop to buy something that was shut and we've then come out in the van to come and look at trellis panels um, we've been to one shop didn't have the right size and what we really wanted in stock um, then of course it's lunchtime everything stops um, Nick managed to do some research on the internet and we've now decided in the van to go to York which is how far away? 75 kilometres 75 kilometres and how long will that take us? 43 minutes so we're going on a little bit of a road trip now all in search of trellis panels woohoo! And we have arrived. There is a man who knows what he wants and is going to get it. Apart from I don't think he can reach it. It's always a great day out when you come and find new Brico shops. It's been a while. Another wonderful morning, and let's go and try again. Take two, going to the stone shop. So this is the place to come if you want anything stone. They do pretty much anything in stone. Oh my God, look at that. A wild boar, a mere snip at 200 euros. This is where we came for our columns and planters that went at the end of the pool. But yeah, they do pretty much everything. There's some dice over there. Look at the little black dachshunds, aren't they cute? We've now ordered a bench to collect in two weeks time, haven't we? We have. Are you happy with it? Over the moon. Oh good, just a short wait. Right, well, first little job I'm gonna do is fit this. Out around the pool, we fitted these two pergolas next to each other with a gap in between and a wisteria at the bottom and this trellis is going to fill that gap that was quite a quick job i think that looks all right so now get the rest of the trellising up here. Here's one of the bigger trellis pieces. We're gonna fit that across the end bit there, another bit across the top of it, and then try and do something across the top there. Um, a bit tricky because there's nothing to screw it to here. It's got these bits of metal. Um, so we're gonna try something. Oh, sorry about that. I'm gonna try something a bit different. Um, cable ties. I need to go out to the Brico to get some more brackets. Five minutes later. Okay, so we're back from the Brico. Got the brackets. Let's get them up.
trellis work is finished up there for now it's all quite secure it's not going to fall down just giving something for the foliage to grow up and now I was talking to the foliage a little square over there and that's where I'm going to plant it so I'm going to do it now but in the morning I'll come out dig a hole plant something and then let nature do the rest of it Be about a year ago we started the transformation of this area um, there was a wall that went across here and we opened it up originally to allow the digger and dumper truck to get through to the garden to dig the hole for the pool um, as part of what we did we uncovered a sort of trap door in the floor um, which revealed a pit underneath now we don't really know why it's there um, but one of the things that happened during the course of the digger and dumper going backwards and forwards was the lid to the pit became damaged and progressively more and more damaged and I need to repair that now. So I covered it up with this metal plate just to stop anyone falling through and damaging it even more. I need to repair it really. And whilst we were at the Brico the other day, I bought one of these that I think will do the job. I'll be able to open it and have a look in whenever I feel like opening it and having a look in. Um, so yeah, I just need to get rid of that stone in the middle and try and work out how to put the other thing in place. I've uh, got these old roofing boards which were from the Jeet when we re-roofed re that. I'm just cutting them in into sections to make some shuttering to put underneath this thing um, to enable me to fill the outside of it all with concrete. So. I think I'm there now. Um, the hole around the bottom of it, concrete would have just fallen in. So I put a little base there. Fill all of that with concrete, leave it overnight, and then it should be good to go. Concrete time. concrete needed. I think that's done. So I just need to leave it well alone and come back to it tomorrow. Okay, well I'm up above the, um, the wine tanks in the barn here. The one that I've just shown you 
almost full of water and that's the one that we've been filling up for two or three months now. Um, so I've just moved the hose to an empty one. I need to go and put the door on the front of the tank, but we have, well, it's not quite full, but it's about 15 cubic meters of water in there, 15 tons of water. So, uh, seems to be working at the moment, doesn't it? Anyway, I'm gonna put the, put the hose in the next one because, uh, yeah, can't fit much more in this one, can I? I mean, I'll do a fair bit of rain in the next few days, so uh, makes sense, fill up a new one. door on the tank here. Um, the tap seems to be shut so just got to wait for some rain and once it starts filling up I'll be able to make sure that the tap is properly closed and that the door is properly sealed. Um, so yeah I don't want to say bring on the rain but bring it on. No sooner did I say bring on the rain, look what's happening. Ugh. So when the pool was being dug, we had the digger and dumper truck going in and out through the entrance here. Um, and it worked until one day there was an oopsie. As you can see, some of the tiles got damaged here and there's another one missing there. Uh, it's not a massive job, but it'll just smarten it up quite a bit if I can fix all of that, so. Can I have a go at doing that? There we have it, repaired. I'm quite pleased with that. Well, as you see, I've just taken the wooden formers off the hole in the ground there and fitted the lid. I'm pleased with that. Another little job I've got to do today. So in front of the greenhouse, just to put some slabs down there. slab in front of the greenhouse for Claire. Need to be pointed up still, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's looking all right. Quite pleased with that. Is he not?
don't like pandas. Then he came in for a few things. Now remember how I don't like moths. I'm not too bad with snakes. Hello. You're gonna to touch his bum. <laughs> you can show me where it is. <laughs> well, it's the arse end of the head. <laughs> We've come to Cognac for a rare night out. Um, just going to go up the other end of the square for dinner and then uh, later on this evening there's going to be a sort of Sonne Lumiere thing going on against those sort of tower things over there. So uh, there we go. See what it's about. So what's your starter? Baked egg with rock form. And how do they call that? Earth cocotte. Yeah. And I've got a trout and pea gazpacho, I think. Mm. And a lovely looking lamb shank for you. And an homemade endroulette for me. Which is sort of like a sausage, but made with all the odds and ends that's left over. Every young lady likes the shank. <laughs> So we've had a lovely dinner in one of the restaurants behind us and we are now down near the river by Cognac and we're just waiting for the lights to start here. Um, you can't see because Nick's in the way as normal but further along here somewhere on the banks is Hennessy as well and it is absolutely <laughs> packed full of people. Still lovely.
existe ici même, un passage incontournable pour accéder au cœur de la cité, La Charente a toujours été un vecteur important de l'économie locale. Un privilège avait d'ailleurs été donné en son temps par le roi pour le commerce du sel. Qui... Well, that's it. Quarter of an hour of learning about the history of that thing over there. I understood probably about 10%, 20%, maybe a little bit more. I'll explain it. Good. Well, anyway, it's dark, we've had dinner. It's really lovely and ambient. No. Cocktail then home? Oh, now we're talking. <laughs> Hi. Hi, and welcome to Wine of, of the Week. week. And we're back on wine. Yes, yeah, so this week we have a rosé. It is called Studio by Miraval. Now, for those people who know their stuff and celebrity gossip, Miraval is a vineyard in Provence which is partly owned by Brad Pitt. Yum yum. They make some good wine too. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> we wouldn't be doing it for wine of the week. No, no so we're going to no. try this for a change. It's, it's actually it's even a screw top, and this came from a discount store. It was seven euros and fifteen cents. So sorry, Brad, you're not earning that much out of us. No, no. If you want to come here, I'll give you a tip though. <laughs> anyway, another good week. We have nearly finished around the pool. A couple more bits of more decorative work to finish off. Um, but yeah, so close. It's uh, just in time for the imminent arrival of my parents. Yes, we are on the countdown to the arrival of mother-in-law. And just so you remember, there is nothing but the best from my mother-in-law. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Cheers. So we hope you've enjoyed this week's episode. If you have enjoyed watching, please click the like button. Button. Uh, button. It does help us. And if you've not subscribed, please consider doing so. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, or on our website at www.theexpatbutchers.com. Um, but for now, we're going to enjoy this because the weather's still good here. It's almost 30 today and actually I've had a look at the forecast the next couple of days we're back up to 36, 38, something like that. I can feel some pool time coming on. Definitely. Anyway. So, until then, <laughs> cheers. Cheers. Like Only the juices of Brad Pitt taste this fine. <laughs> <laughs> See you next week. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs>